You got it. Donna Braid, nice to see you here. Are you jumping ship or what's going on? <laughs> you bet. You're not well, I do live in Bowmanville, it is true. But uh, no, not, not this time. <laughs> we have our, our club has just rewritten its awards policy and okay. we're looking for nominations from I'm our sure club. And so we heard that you were doing a big award thing Start today. Video. So we thought we, I just go. have a look. Sounds good. Oh, wow. Excellent. There, there I am. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Martha. <laughs> oh, I, we made it. I, I'm technical difficulties. Never done this before. So there's always a first for oh. everything. Well, I think Hello, we're everyone. Gonna, I think we're going to hit a record tonight for the number of people joining a Hi, everyone. Uh, Rotary Club meeting. So I think so. <laughs> can, can this Zoom can handle it? Martha. Hi, Pauline. Oh, oh hi, hey, Jason. Hi. Hey, Rachel. Well, who I know. <laughs> <laughs> they just shut up and get going. Hi, Yosef. Hi, John. Is that the Jim Boat who has a, a hero named after him in a park? That's right. Oh, fantastic. I love that place. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve how are you? Not too bad, you? I'm good. Great get together this week, Joe. Yes. See some real people. Yeah, that was really nice. That was it was good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was great. I'd forgotten what that's like. I, I, I couldn't recognize half the people because they had their masks on. I, that's right. <laughs> that was a good, uh, good session, Joe. Thank you yeah. for the invites. Hey, Mark. Hello. Hello. All right. Well, we're starting to get uh, a full boat here. So uh, it's not a pun given that Jim just joined, but. <laughs> can you hear me okay? We can. Thank we're you. Gonna, we're going to get rolling in about two minutes. We'll, uh, we'll kick things off and I'll just let the uh, stragglers join uh, uh, as, they, uh, as they come on board. And I see, I see Brock and Gonzalo there. What's going on there? Hey, hey Mark, how are you? Good. <laughs> how you guys doing? Not bad, and you? Very. I, I see BOAA, Bowenville. Old Colorado Colorado Association. Ah, that's awesome. <laughs> Here we go. There it is. <laughs> Hey, Steve, Mark, here. Welcome. Whoops. <laughs> um, here comes a real perspective, Rotarian. Uh, Andrew Sawa. Very good. Wish I had a bigger screen. <laughs> Me, too. Me too. Me too. Hello, Wayne. Hello. Hello, Jim. Hey, Wayne. Oh, here comes our MPP as well. I see the press is here. We'll have to be on our best behavior. That's right. That's right. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome, Jen. Hello, thanks for having me. And welcome to uh, Lindsay Park, who's joined. Hi, Thank Lindsay. you, Steve. I'm just uh, driving back to Queen's Park, but I'm going to get off the road here so I can chat with you guys in a second. Sounds good. Sounds good. OK. Well, uh, folks, we may as well get things underway. I'll, I'll let everyone else who's uh, who are stragglers in. Um, <laughs> Welcome to the March 25th edition of the Bowmanville Rotary Club. We got a special evening planned, as most of you know, which is why we have 65 people as opposed to uh, uh, 28 uh, that we normally get uh, on an evening. It's fantastic to have you here. Um, I'm, normally, we would name all of our guests and uh, do a formal welcome, but I'm not going to be able to do that uh, with with so many of you joining us. So. 
welcome. Thank you for taking time out of your day to, uh, to make this night uh, a special event. Um, so before we uh, get into, uh, before we get into things, uh, it'd be great if everyone who's not speaking could hit the mute button on their screen. Uh, it, okay, when you do need to speak, it's okay. You just take yourself off mute and uh, uh, politely uh, uh, you know, interject. Okay, and that's, that's all right. Now, um, without further ado, before we uh, get into the program, we usually start things off with a few toasts. So if you've got a drink handy, that's great. If not, uh, uh, just play along with us anyways and pretend. First off, a toast to Her Majesty, to the Queen. The Queen. The Queen. To Canada. Canada. And Rotary International. Rotary International. OK. Um, with that, uh, Rajesh, you're on the line, I believe. Uh, would you like to do the uh, invocation for us? Yes, sure. Good evening, everybody. So uh, for today's invocation, Almighty God, we beseech thy guidance and wisdom for this worldwide organization of Rotary International. Devoted to service above my May each one of us be inspired to respond to the opportunities for better serving our fellow men. And may these provisions of thy bounty so graciously given be thankfully received. Amen. Thank you very much, Rishesh. That was fantastic. Um, since we have so many guests, uh, I'm take a moment just really at a high level to say who we are uh, as a Bowmanville Rotary Club. We're, we're a collection of folks that uh, follow a motto of service above self. Uh, in our club right now, we have 55 uh, community-minded uh, individuals ranging in age from uh, low 30s uh, up to the, the septuoctogenarians in, uh, in the group. Uh, our club was founded back in 1924, so we're coming up on our centenary in uh, uh, just a few short years. And uh, we do all that we can to uh, raise a little bit of money in the, uh, in the community and then pass that straight back to, uh, to help other organizations and groups within, uh, within Bowmanville. So you might have seen our, uh, our little uh, gear themed wheel in different places. That, that's who we are. There, there are thousands of Rotary Clubs and millions of members all around the world. And we're just a small part of that. Uh, thank you for, for being a part of it tonight. Um, Pauline, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries this week? President Steve, disappointingly at this special meeting, there's no Rotarians celebrating as far as I know. I, I have been wrong before, but don't tell John. Um, but a very special Canadian has a birthday today. Let's say happy birthday to Mike Myers. <laughs> All right, party on. Party on, dude. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, that worked. Uh, all right, well, we'll jump straight into the program now. As you know, we've got a, uh, uh, a series of uh, special uh, 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 presentations uh, this evening. We're gonna start off with, do we have Doug Sears on the line? Right here, Steve. Perfect, Doug, why don't you take it away? Okay, so just wanting to give a bit of a background and context for the Rotary Foundation and our Paul Harris Fellow recognitions. Uh, the mission of the Rotary Foundation is to enable Rotarians to advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace through funding different projects and initiatives focused on the improvement of health, the support of education, and the alleviation of poverty. The Bowmanville Rotary Club and its members have donated to the Rotary Foundation and as a result, are able to recognize members of the community who have demonstrated a shared purpose with the educational and humanitarian objectives of the Rotary Foundation. Paul Harris Fellow recognition is named after the Rotary's founder, the late Paul Harris, 
a Chicago lawyer who started Rotary with three business associates in 1905. The individuals being presented with a Paul Harris Fellow recognition tonight joined the remarkable company of people throughout the world, all recognized for their commitment to service above self to benefit local and international communities. Back to you, Steve. All right. So in, uh, in the invitation that, uh, that you all received, uh, you might have noticed that we called this evening uh, Everyday Heroes of the Pandemic. Well, what are we doing? Uh, normally, a Paul Harris Fellow is, well, for our club anyways, it's been treated as a bit of a lifetime achievement award of sorts, right? But like everything else during the pandemic, COVID changed how our clubs looked at things and uh, identified the need for recognition. It's been such a hard year for all of us. You know, financial stress, mental health issues. Our routines have been blown up uh, and totally changed. Uh, our hobbies have changed. Things are just utterly different. Um, and it's left, uh, you know, as you all know, it's left us all kind of wondering where exactly we sit. So uh, I started to think about uh, a quote from Mr. Rogers, you know, of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, of course. Uh, and it kind of rang true for tonight. He said, when I was a boy, I would see scary things in the news and my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Well, uh, a couple of months ago, we paused and we started to look around as the club and we saw so many helpers in our community. We decided that it was uh, time to, uh, to recognize what all of you are doing in our community to help us get through this strange time. You know, some of you helpers are doing big things, uh, while others, it's just a very small thing that means so much to others uh, that you're doing. Uh, some of you have been doing, uh, have been helping for years, while others have found new callings in volunteerism uh, through the pandemic, and that's that's a great thing. Um, some of you have built things. Uh, others have kept us safe, and some have simply made us smile when we were finding it hard to. Uh, so a Paul Harris Fellow uh, is not an award, you know, people will say. It's a recognition, but I'm probably going to say award an awful lot uh, today. So uh, my friends uh, in the club can beat me up about that afterwards. Um, it's awarded, is given or uh, granted to individuals primarily, and often organizations in the form of a certificate of appreciation who exemplify the values of Rotary International and our motto of service above self. Each of the recipients joining us today represent the best of our community and have lived that motto. Of course, normally we get to present uh, the certificates and uh, your pins and your medallions in person and we you know we get to actually affix them to you uh, during this presentation it's not going to happen tonight obviously and i didn't want to spoil what's left of the surprise by delivering them early so rest assured uh once the medallions clear uh, customs uh overnight tonight and i get them i will deliver your certificates pins and medals to you uh in short order um now uh Let's jump straight into it. Do we have Wayne Routley to uh, introduce our first recipient? Yes, uh, right here, Steve. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate the opportunity to recognize Jim uh, Boat uh, as a Paul Harris Fellow. Now, Jim's uh, on board here, and he's got some of his family members, which is just great. Uh, now, I got to know Jim at the uh, gym, Jim and Jim, a little alliteration there, at the uh, uh, Curtis Community Complex, and over a fairly lengthy period of time, I discovered that uh, Jim has uh, a few passions in his life. Uh, one is cycling. Uh, Wayne. Yes. Wayne. Wayne. I screwed up. Uh, hey, now, I, Jim, you'll have to uh, uh, forgive me for this. Uh, I mess up one time per meeting. It's a running uh, joke in the club, and I skipped over a massive piece of our agenda uh, uh, in my eagerness to get to things. Um, uh, we have online, we have uh, Mayor Foster 
and uh, our MPP, uh, Lindsay Park, uh, who are bringing greetings from the municipality and uh, from the province. Uh, so before we carry on with Jim's presentation, why don't we uh, pass the mic over to uh, Mayor Foster. Your Worship. So Steve, thank you. Uh, I, I'm sure Lindsay's gonna say the same thing. That wasn't necessary. I understand why you wanted to get to the exciting part in, <laughs> instead of hearing me. But, but I, I will share uh, one thing with you. Uh, you may not know that on this day in 1954, RCA started manufacturing their first color television. Um, and, and, you know, they were on to something really good. And I would suggest that, uh, that with what you're doing tonight, uh, you are on to something really good. I would also suggest that um, all of the members uh, and everyone who is on tonight uh, probably gets the title of everyday hero. So when we look at what Rotary does in the community, you guys are all heroes and every day you are doing things for our community. So uh, thank you ever so much. Steve, I do have to ask, who is the Sergeant at Arms? That's a great question. So you've been to lots of Rotary meetings before. Uh, we don't have a Sergeant at Arms in our program uh, right now. We've worked, uh, we've changed it around due to COVID, so. So I will point out that you did not tell me that having a drink in hand remind me for the toast would have been useful. And I say that with some temerity because I think it was John Burns who nailed me uh, when we were at the university for not having my pin and that cost me 20 bucks. So I'll fess up and the next time I get to join you guys, I guess I'm on the hook. <laughs> uh, but thank you, thank you. And uh, to the recipients, congratulations uh, to, uh, to the club. Uh, for all that you do, thank you. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Oh, now on to Adrian. Uh, Adrian, uh, I think we should find Steve K for that, don't you? Sure. I'll I'll put a twenty in the uh, in the kitty. That's okay. Got it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> now on to uh, uh, our MPP, uh, Lindsay Park. Lindsay, over to you. Thank you, Steve. And, and as Adrian said, I don't think you have to apologize for missing the, like a big part of the agenda. Surely the, the, the most important and big part of the agenda is still to come. Um, uh, but thank you for, for, for letting me uh, join you. And, and I know we all wish we could be in person. And uh, I, I wish I could be giving you scrolls in person. Um, but surely we'll get back to that uh, as soon as we can here. Um, but I, you know, I can't believe it. It's been more, more than a year now. Can we believe it's been that long that we've all been going through what's, you know, for many of us, like the, one of the most challenging times of, of our life and, and, uh, so many people in our community, I think this is really the silver lining, Steve, so many people in our community have really risen to the occasion and, truly put service above self, which, you know, is, is the motto of Rotary. And, and, you know, I see at every uh, Bowmanville Rotary event I attend, um, truly that's modeled through Rotary. And so I'm so glad you're taking the time to really honor those members of your club um, this evening. And I'm just, I'm so pleased to be a part of it. And I know our federal member of Parliament, Aaron O'Toole, wishes he could be part of it too. You might have noticed he has got his hands full. <laughs> with a few things right now, but he, you know, I, I think he's a member of the Bowmanville Ro Ro Rotary Club and, and a Rotarian. And, and I know he is uh, incredibly grateful for, for all the, the selfless service we've seen in our community as I am. So thank you to everyone. And I look forward to, to properly honoring you tonight. Thank you, Lindsay. And that was a good segue. Uh, so technically speaking, Aaron's a uh, Curtis Rotarian, but I'm not going to hold that against him. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we do have a message, uh, a short message from Aaron. He wasn't able to join tonight, but he sent a uh, uh, he sent a video along. So I'm just going to share that up in just a second, and then we'll get back to uh, things. So you don't have to read all my emails. You should see uh, Aaron's face now. And here we go. Hello, friends. 
I wish I could be with you today to celebrate the everyday heroes in my hometown, in Clarington and Durham, who've stepped up in major ways during the pandemic to help your neighbors and to help our community. This past year has been difficult, the most difficult in our lives. But thanks to your leadership and to the initiative of the Rotary Club of Bowmanville and your members and your family members, residents across Clarington, across Bowmanville and Durham have been helped. I've seen it firsthand. Whether it was your help with seniors and our most vulnerable, checking in on them, delivering groceries, or when you raise money for food banks, for youth programming, or to support those fleeing domestic violence. Your leadership as Rotarians have made a real difference in our community. That's why in recognition of your service, I was pleased to present the Rotary Club of Bowmanville with a service medallion marking your outstanding community efforts during my virtual constituency open house in December. It was a small way that I could acknowledge your leadership in our community in difficult times. I'd also like to extend special thanks and congratulations to your recipients of the Paul Harris Fellow Awards this year. That is a sign that you have truly gone above and beyond to help our community. You embody service above self. So I'm so proud to thank you as someone who talks about being from Bowmanville everywhere I go, physically or virtually. I'm so proud of your leadership. Thank you for showing that our community is united, compassionate, and strong. Okay. All right. So back at it now, uh, Jim, or sorry, uh, Jim and uh, and Wayne. Let's pick up where Wayne left off. Yep. Not a, not a problem. Now, as I was saying, I met Jim Boat at the gym, and uh, over a period of time and many discussions and whatnot, I found out he has a few passions in his life, and uh, one is cycling and the other is hiking. But it's much more than just participating in those two events. Jim is an advocate of both and just as, and just as a user, but not just as a user, but to promote and get involved to enhance and increase the number of cycling and hiking trails. He's been doing this for many years through two platforms. One platform is through Ontario Hydro, where Jim is an active member of their community advisory committee for, for Darlington. And he has worked with the committee to enhance and improve the Great Lakes Waterfront Trail that passes through and beyond the hydro property. The second pl platform is through the municipality of Clarington. Jim is an active member of the Transportation Committee. And two years ago, Jim advocated for the winter maintenance of the uh, trails in Clarington so they could be used. This got turned down. With COVID-19 this past year, he took another run at it with the municipality again and proposed the trails be maintained during the winter. This time it got accepted and approved. There are now four trails uh, maintained during the winter months in Clarington. The public feedback from Jim's initiative has been very, very positive. A great example of service above self and warrants a Paul Harris Fellowship recognition by the Rotary Club of Bowmanville for these paths are now being heavily, or paths are being heavily used during the winter months. So congratulations, Jim, and so appreciative of the fact that you were able to join us this evening in this recognition. Yeah. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you very much, uh, Jim, for all you do. Uh, as a, a fellow cyclist, I, uh, I appreciate uh, your work outside of uh, COVID that you've done over the years. And as someone that walks his dogs through uh, the trails year round, thank you for this uh, this year, uh, much deserved. I wish I could uh, present you with your pin and your medallion uh, right now, uh, but the whole community thanks you. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that not only do we give Paul Harris Fellows to uh, individuals, but there's also an avenue to uh, grant uh, a recognition of sorts to organizations that have gone above and beyond. And 
we're doing just that with a couple of organizations tonight. The first one is the Bonneville Older Adult Association. Uh, Fred Mandrick, would you like to uh, introduce the BOA for us? Fred, you might be muted. Yes, look out, I got, <laughs> okay. Hi, Steve, thanks for that little intro, that's great. TBOAA, it's made up of many amazing people uh, and we appreciate the re this recognition more than words can possibly communicate. I asked them to jot down a few things about the organization and received the following. When BOA was uh, forced to close in March of 2020, the staff were laid off. Programs and events were canceled and plans for the future stood at a complete standstill. However, this was short-lived, you better believe it. Team BOAA put into action and they pivoted like many other local businesses and an organization to ensure that its members and guests has a piece <clears throat> to continue to call home. Virtual programming on Zoom and over a uh, mercury phone line system kicked in within two weeks after that, after uh, the big change had come. After some temporary layoffs and staff and students regrouped and met and reorganized and launched initial, initial uh, <clears throat> virtual programs, drive through meals and events that uh, were on for a very short period of time, some small in person group activities in a tent and then that was installed in the back of the BOAA because they couldn't get into the building, it was locked. During this difficult time, many other older adults uh, and the team of BOAA continued to support, uh, provided daily care calls to those without the ability to participate online, organizing delivery of meals, books and puzzles, hosting contests and riddles and challenges, and working closely with the local partners like Rotary Club of Bowmanville to provide grocery deliveries. The weekly meal drive they ran every Thursday was a consistent a source of fun, fun, a little bit of fundraising for the organization and the support of its memberships in the community. It was much appreciated for sure. Just recently, the BOAA partnered up with the uh, Ontario Tech University to provide technology, listen to this one, to older adults free of charge with a collection and refurbishment of laptops and tablets. The program's been amazing for those requiring technology as the device, <coughs> as the devices are provided free of charge and the team of, uh, at BOA support with the tech assistance. And over the past few weeks, the BOA members have started on a new adventure, providing support uh, <laughs> this is a little tough uh, for our 80 plus population as they navigate and book their vaccine appointments for them. The support has meant the world for many of our members and we appreciate them and trusting us to assist them. Now, here's the magic list of this team. Team BOAA made up of Chelsea Wolf, Kristen Van Dyke, uh, Tom Schotten, uh, Simon Bush, Veronica Vargas, Juliette Cortez, Rachel Terry, Hope Pascal, uh, Sharon Dunn, and Sheila Riccio. Fearlessly lit, led by Angie Darlison, the director and chief operating person there. She does everything except clean the floor and even does that sometime too. I give you the BOAA and congratulations, folks. It's our privilege to present you with the Paul Harris fellow. Thank you. Thank you to Angie and the entire team. Uh, you do such good work and it was so important for you to stay active throughout this. Uh, I know our senior community in town just, it, it would have struggled a lot more without you. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Fred and Steve. On behalf of the team at BOA, we uh, were honored and privileged to serve our community and we really appreciate this recognition. It means a lot, thank you. Our, our honor. Uh, our next uh, a person is gonna be introduced by Gail Nyberg. Gail, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm there, finally yeah. unmuted, <laughs> it took me a while. 
So I'm very, very proud to uh, introduce to you Ben Earl. Ben Earl is the executive director of Feed the Need Durham. It's a position he's held for over five years. And I think he would be first to tell you that although it's his name, his whole team deserves this award. Um, so, you know, food banks are, are very important in our community all the time, but none more important than they have been right now. The number of people who've had to rely on food banks and the number, the work that Ben and his team have done to make sure that people uh, are fed in our community has been second to none. He has worked tirelessly with his team. Uh, you know, we've seen the fundraising in increase because our community is so very generous. We have been able to expand our, our uh, distribution. We've been able to uh, certainly uh, rent more space, get trucks, uh, extra trucks, and you know we know how just just how important he's even his him and his team have been able to help with our grocery program where some of the people who needed uh, groceries didn't uh, didn't have the money to to purchase them and they have stepped up there. Uh, We've uh, started a food purchase program, something that, that Feed the Need has not done before. And uh, last I heard, we've spent over $300,000 making sure that the kinds of things that we're giving out in food banks are things that people need. So I'm so very proud to introduce you to uh, Ben Earl, who is the Executive Director of Feed the Need. And he, for those who you don't know, is a lifelong Bowmanville resident. So congratulations, Ben. I'm proud to work with you. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. And I do think I agree with Gail. This this is this recognition is for the whole team, and that does include um, our board chair, Gail Nyberg, uh, who is a wonderful leader and supports me every day and the whole team. So thank you. Well, thank you, Ben. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, seeing you yesterday uh, uh, at the uh, check presentation. Yes. Um, in, in a convenient. Uh, uh, almost, I, it was an accident, honestly. I didn't plan it quite this way. Uh, but a, uh, this is a convenient segue. Chris Christodoulou, can you introduce our next recipient? This one is one of our own, a uh, Bowmanville Rotarian. Yeah, uh, thank you, Steve. <clears throat> now, before I do that, I'd just like to uh, say that as a member of the um, Board of Directors oh, of uh, BOA, I'd like to thank the Bowmanville uh, Rotary Club for the uh, honor that you've um, given to uh, to Boa. So now to Joe Solway. Joe Solway is one of the hardest working Rotarians in Bowmanville. And, and I guess everybody knows Joe. He's a well-liked, uh, popular individual who is, although he's only been a member of the club for you know, about three years, just over three years, he, everybody knows him and everybody likes him. He's a well-loved individual. Now, <clears throat> as I say, he's one of the hardest working individuals in the Rotary Club, but that's not why we are introducing and, and recommending him for the Paul Harris Fellow Award today. Otherwise, most of the Rotarians would be uh, uh, deserving of the same award. So that's not how it works. You have to, uh, in order to be eligible for this, you have to make a, a unique contribution to the community. And Joe's unique contribution is the Feed the Need concert, which I'm sure everybody has heard and most of the people uh, have actually been to the concert and attended it. Now, this concert was Joe's brainchild. He conceived it, he organized it, he promoted it relentlessly, and he made it happen, which is the most important thing. Uh, Joe was a relatively a new Rotarian in 2018 when he saw a need in the community and he came up with the idea of a concert to raise money for the Feed the Need in Durham. He pitched this idea to Steve Kay and Steve at the time was the director of the fundraising committee and also to Gail Nyberg uh, and Gail was on the board of Feed the Need in Durham at the time. Joe had also worked with Gail many uh, times before uh, as part of his job as a CBC producer. Now, both the Rotary Club and uh, Feed the Need approved Joe's proposal, and Joe set to work. 
Now, he was the main organizer of this concert and made most of the arrangements with help, of course, from Ali and many other um, Rotarians. He arranged with the uh, Bowmanville High School for the use of the auditorium facility. And he found, auditioned, and booked all the acts just by cold calling and using his experience as a former CBC producer. The first concert was held in, uh, at BHS in December 2018 and raised about $13,000. The second concert was also at BHS and that was in December 2019 and that raised $14,000. Now, due to COVID-19, the last concert was held online in December 2020. And due to Joe's efforts, other local Rotary clubs agreed to uh, participate in this concert. This concert raised over $21,000. So altogether, the Feed the Need concerts have raised over $48,000. Now, Feed the Need in Durham say that <clears throat> they can distribute $7 worth of food for every dollar donated. So the money raised by these uh, concerts so far <clears throat> translate to about 340,000 worth of food distributed by Feed the Need in Durham to a needy organization. Now, many people have helped Joe in order to make these concerts possible. But without Joe's initiative, efforts, and perseverance, these concerts would not have been possible. That is why Joe is a worthy recipient of this Paul Harris Fellowship Award. Fantastic. He certainly is. Thank you, uh, Chris. Thank you well, so Joe. much, Chris. If, if I could just say a, a quick word. I know. Quick words in me are probably not, probably an oxymoron. But listen, you know, it really is, and we talk about a team, it really, really is from the from, from the outset with, you know, Steve and Kevin and Gail and, and Ellie stepping up the first couple of years was incredible. Um, and everybody else who, you know, sold tickets and put up posters and, 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 and you know, went online and did Facebook. And this year, uh, Rachel Boyd for all her incredible work, Claire Camacho for her work, uh, all the other Bowmanville Rotary, all the other Durham Rotary Clubs, which is just great. And even one in Toronto joined in the Bay Brewer Club. I got a, a special shout out to them. Um, to our sponsors as well, uh, you know, the one, the, the, the people that I really have to thank are the musicians, you know, the, the stepping up, saying yes, for sure, we'd love to help, especially this year when so many of them have been, um, you know, looking for work themselves and are in need themselves and they stepped up. We had over 25 acts this year, which was incredible. And lastly, the, the um, none of this would have happened without you know, the inspiration and the support of Rotary. Rotary really is a great organization. So thank you so much for your support, for your help. And, uh, and thank you very much for this, uh, for this fellowship. Cheers, Joe. Cheers. Okay, all right, moving on. Uh, next up is one of my, uh, well, you're all my favorite, but uh, this one's especially favorite for me. Um, Amy, would you like to introduce our next uh, recipient? thrilled to, although I think you're a little jealous that I'm doing it and you're not. I am. So our next recipient is familiar, a, a very familiar face to all of Bowmanville, even though we may only see half of her face right now. It's my pleasure to introduce Marge Huckster. So if you think you don't know who Marge is, I'm here to tell you that you likely do know who Marge is. She has worked at Metro, which of course was formerly a &P, for the last 36 years. She's been the smiling, welcoming cashier that has some, some people, Steve K, may actually plan their shopping trips around to make sure she's there. Marge lives here in Bowmanville. As it turns out, we're actually neighbors. She just lives around the corner from me. She's got two daughters, and I'm so excited to say that her daughter from Montreal came this week to be here with her mom for this award. Uh, she also has a son, and more importantly, she has four grandchildren. Marge at some point has probably checked us all out at Metro over the years, but if we need to find a silver lining to this pandemic, it's Marge has been moved from cashier to her lobby position. 
So she's the one who asks you, do you want a basket or a cart? And then disinfects it for us. Not that she wasn't a great cashier, but the fact that Marge gets to kibitz and chat with all of the incoming people, this, she, she's loving it. And we're loving her doing it. So this has been a fantastic thing. Um, for those of you, especially maybe Marge's family, don't know that I'm a funeral director in town. And we have a, a plaque at Metro that has all of our death notices on it. So the running joke at, more, at North Cadelliot is when we come in with our notices, Marge is like, am I on there? And thankfully, no, Marge, you're not on there. But if it weren't for the construction going on at Metro right now, I would have a huge notice up there telling all of Bowmanville that Marge Huckster is the newest recipient of the Bowmanville Rotary Club Paul Harris Fellow. Well-deserved, congratulations. Okay, way to go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Amy. Thanks for the, for Steve Kay for his Tuesday visits, Two Buggy Tuesday, the Saturday visits, and I'm just glad that I could, have, could put a smile on everybody's faces. Had no idea that it meant so much to people, and I thoroughly enjoy it. I call myself the new Walmart greeter at Metro. There you Thanks go. Thanks again. Marge, it is important. Uh, it, it's funny, you know what? Uh, I've enjoyed our banter, but as as I started telling people about that, I go, I love her. She's my favorite. And it's so important at this time just to get a chance to put a smile on someone's face. And you do that uh, uh, hundreds of times a day. Thank you, Marge. Um, thank you for getting us through this. Um, OK, I'm next up with our next introduction. Um, we've got Stephen Mintz on the line. Um, like everything else in 2020, Christmas just wasn't going to be the same. There weren't going to be parties. There weren't, weren't going to be uh, mall Santas to take pictures with. There weren't going to be parades. Uh, Steve looked around and uh, thought, oh, I need to do something about that. Uh, he and his wife, uh, uh, Sherry, and, uh, and their neighbors decided that they were going to uh, endeavor to put smiles on people's faces in a couple of ways. Um, first, they organized uh, an opportunity to, you know, COVID appropriately uh, get pictures with Santa uh, with the kids. So they set up a space uh, uh, on their lawns and neighborhood kids came by. Steve dressed up as Santa Claus and uh, they got pictures and people donated. People uh, opened up their wallets and, you know, whether it was five, 10, $20 at a time, over the course of three days, in addition to some food that was donated, they raised $1,400, right? Oh, they wow. immediately went out onto the, uh, 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 onto social media and started looking for people that just needed some help, whether it was food or, or, or gifts uh, uh, for the families. Uh, they found a few tar uh, you know, families to help and spread that money uh, appropriately. Um, Steve, uh, it's these types of things I mentioned earlier on, uh, folks that, you know, may not have been interested in joining a, a, a service club before, or hadn't really done, uh, you know, I don't, I, honestly, I don't know if you'd done a lot of volunteering before, but people were grabbing these opportunities and you're such a fantastic example of that, where you lit up uh, this the season that seemed like it was going to be so dark for uh, for us. Thank you for doing that, Steve. You, uh, your family, and all of your neighbors. Well, I don't really fit Santa position, but I tried really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to hide from my son a lot too, so I had to dodge a lot of bullets. <laughs> but there was a lot of kids that were happy, and it was a little awkward at first, but I was getting used to it. But Thanks for the recognition. Uh, I had a lot of help. My neighbor helped out a lot, and uh, uh, Donnie from DNT Auto came out to play the third day of Santa. So it worked out pretty good. Everybody was happy. Everybody was enjoying. The, the third day was the best turnout. So everybody started catching on. 
That's fantastic. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we're so happy to uh, to recognize you today. Um, next, Jason Tippy, would you like to introduce our next uh, recipient for us? I would love to. Uh, I want to introduce Mark Canning. Uh, I have to say, I don't know you personally. We've chatted uh, just via emails and stuff like that. Uh, actually, when you're starting to do your great thing in town. Mark, I was just thinking about, have you ever, uh, I'm sure you know Top Gun. And uh, I, was just, I was just thinking in my strange humor, which I'm getting from Gord more and more, but uh, you got to have a handle of the Iceman. So you guys will understand this when I, when I get to this. But anyways, I just want to say congratulations on, uh, on making an initiative come from planning to fruition on bringing ice rinks to Roswell Park in Curtis and Guildwood Park in Bowmanville. Uh, building these rinks with the help of Clarington, local businesses, and especially the volunteers. And of course, Mark, you taking the lead in this initiative. Um, that was a pretty great idea. Um, so I was trying to get uh, exercise and COVID-19 safe restrictions in one sentence is just another roadblock that you guys had to face. So you guys made it come together. And that's why uh, you've been nominated for this Paul Harris. Uh, just wanna say thanks for being a great inspiration to our community and uh, getting the folks out there, families uh, out onto the ice during this wonderful time of COVID-19. Jason, thanks for that. Uh, when Steve called me, it was uh, totally unexpected and uh, I'm honestly very honored by it. But really, like you said, it, if it wasn't for, uh, well, first of all, Steve and uh, Marcel at the, at the municipality, uh, Janice Jones, of course, who helped clear some roadblocks, the small businesses that without them, that we wouldn't have the money to do it. Uh, and then, of course, really all the volunteers that came out and made the rinks and continued to maintain them. And unfortunately, now with uh, golf weather here, they're gone, but uh, anyways, just want to say thanks very much. Appreciate that very much, guys. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Now it's another opportunity to recognize a really important organization in our community. Uh, and to do that, uh, I'd like to call on Lyle Gooden. Lyle, are you there? I'm here, Steve. Thank you. Uh, it's certainly my privilege to present a Paul Harris Fellowship Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Harvey Williams and nurse Jennifer Keeler who are accepting on behalf of everyone, and I do mean everyone, at Lake Ridge Health, and especially our own Lake Ridge Health Bowmanville. Ms. Keeler has been a frontline emergency department nurse at Bowmanville for the past eight years. And Dr. Williams has been a family physician in Bowmanville for 20 years and is the senior member of the Lake Ridge Health Bowmanville Emergency Department's physician group. Dr. Williams is also the physician lead who helps set up and oversee the Clarington COVID Assessment Center that's running at the Garnet Rickard Center. We've heard several times that service above self is Rotary's motto. And we've certainly observed this being demonstrated at Lake Ridge Health during the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. Your courage, hard work, and dedication have been inspiring. We are proud and grateful for what you have done and what you continue to do on our behalf in the battle against COVID-19. Your willingness to tirelessly step forward has earned you our everlasting gratitude. And I can express this no better than to quote Shakespeare from Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. I can no other answer make, but thanks and thanks and ever thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you, Lyle. It, thank you, everyone at Lake Ridge Health. So appreciated. I I I'd just like to say thank you very much for uh, for this uh, this award, and and I'm uh, honored to uh, be here representing Lake Ridge Health. Uh, and uh, Lake Ridge Health is also very much honored to be recognized with uh, all these other celebrated community members who served our community with so much compassion and resilience through this pandemic. Um, I mean, it's been a, a remarkable year and very stressful for many. Um, at Lake Ridge Health, we just continue to try and deliver the very best and safest care for patients and their families that we can. And uh, that's our highest priority. And we're committed to continue doing that 
uh, and look forward to things returning to a more uh, stable future. But um, uh, I, I, I'm humbled to be here because it's, of course, a huge team at Lake Ridge Health. And uh, I was uh, honored to be asked to uh, uh, be here tonight. And thank you again very much for your um, uh, honor to, uh, to Lake Ridge Health um, and all the people working there. Thank you very much. The privilege. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, I get to do the next one again. This uh, uh, this one's a real important one to me. Uh, full disclosure: our next recipient is uh, a very dear friend for, uh, to me. Um, I I present you with uh, Corin Kassir. Uh Corin has been on our radar. Uh, as a deserving recipient of a Paul Harris Fellow for some time. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it took COVID to, uh, to finally get me around to it. Um, Corin is that helper that Mr. Rogers' mom was talking about, if you remember my opening uh, uh, bit. Um, she's the one you look to in the community who is always there helping. Um, if you're at a community event, there's a good chance you're going to see her her husband, uh, Aubrey, or one of their boys, uh, or all of their boys, they're helping out. Uh, Corin was part of the force of nature that was responsible for Picasso's picnic, which uh, has, is now the Clarington uh, Kids Outdoor uh, Art Festival. Uh, co -off, I think. Um, uh, but she laid a fantastic groundwork with that lovely event. Uh, she's ever present at school events, but during COVID, uh, you know, despite seeing her eldest boy go off to school across the country in BC, uh, she and keeping a tight bubble, uh, Corin was there to support so many. She and her husband, uh, Dr. Aubrey Kassir, were there supporting programming at the BOAA. Uh, Corin and her very her merry band of musicians, uh, Oi to the World. We're part of our, our uh, uh, concert to feed the need. Uh, again, I think this was their second year uh, joining us. Um, and ever present to so many friends and people in the community with phone calls, deliveries, and a smile. Corin, we're so thrilled to be able to present you with this recognition. I look forward to getting this past us, this being COVID, uh, so you can stop by for a random hug again. Uh, Corin, thank you for all you do. Thanks, Steve. Um, also, during COVID, I think all of us felt like we, one thing that kept me sane at the beginning was just trying to do stuff to help, even though we were stuck at home. And one of the things that we worked on was mask making. And um, I had a lot of people here that were picking up kits for masks and people were donating fabric and, and making masks and dropping them off and distributing them. And that was sort of one of the things that kept me sane and a whole bunch of people in the neighborhood, all my neighbors and friends that were interested in trying to make masks for healthcare workers and for the nurse nursing homes. And so I wanna thank everybody who worked with me on that project, which really kept me sane during COVID <laughs> during this time. Thank you, Corin. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we're getting down the list here. Uh, our next up, uh, uh, Tim Function, would you introduce our next recipient for us, please? Thank you, President Steve. Um, it's my honor to introduce to the club Martha McGee. She's the manager at the store for Algoma. She has been working for Algoma for 12 years. She's a, a good friend, a good neighbor, someone you can count on when you, you need help or anything. She's like a sister from another mother for me. Anyway, if you go to Algoma during the, when uh, COVID was at its peak in the beginning, the person at the door with the smile, letting you in and keeping you in line, keeping you happy, keeping you safe was Martha. She's always there, always got a smile, and just, you just, you know, what, what, like you're the, the woman from Metro. She's always, you, you recognize Martha, she's the face of Algoma when you go there. And so I'm really happy to be able to present the award to her tonight. And she's been a resident of Newcastle for 31 years. So. Thank you, Tim, and thank you, Martha. 
those little things are so very important. Well done, Martha. Well, thank you so much. I, I'm so honored to be part of this magnificent group. Um, this only reinforces my love for this community and uh, I'm just so grateful and, and I'm totally honored. I thank you so much. Well done, thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on, uh, a chance again uh, to humbly uh, honor one of our own. Uh, Doug Sears, would you introduce our next recipient? Thank you, President Steve. It, uh, it is an honor uh, tonight to recognize, as you say, uh, one of our own uh, Bowmanville Rotarians. And uh, so I have the privilege of recognizing Ellie Brooks. And uh, just to start off, I know Joanna was uh, to do this initially and she really wishes she was here, but I'm glad I'm able to, to step in. So Ellie has been a Rotarian for nearly four years. Um, she is a wife, a stepmom, a grandmother and an aunt. When COVID hit in 2020, Ellie really stepped up and took the lead on organizing uh, the grocery program. And without her, the program would not have been as successful as it was. With her energy and passion, uh, she really took this program uh, and, and took it forward with a zeal to make sure that uh, we were able to support the, the community and for those uh, especially in need of support uh, to getting some food uh, for them during this tough and difficult time. Just a couple fun facts about the grocery program. Uh, so the first delivery was on April 16th of 2020 and that was uh, made by Fred Mandrick. Um, there have been, uh, let me see, 293 deliveries and on uh, average, the program takes uh, or makes uh, eight to 10 deliveries per week. Um, I think I got those numbers right, Ellie, but again, congratulations. And uh, we appreciate all that you do uh, for both the community and for the club. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Um, I may be the face of the, or the, I should say most of the time, the voice of the program but I'm not the program. It's all the volunteers at the club who do the grocery shopping and who do the deliveries. Um, to be quite honest, I have come out the winner in this program because it has kept me totally sane. I think I might've been in the funny farm by now if I hadn't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. You're welcome. Most deserved, Ellie, most deserved. Most deserved, for sure. All right, uh, down to our final recipient. Uh, and Mr. Wallace, would you- uh, Excuse would me, Steve, please... it's not the final one. You've missed one. You think I've missed one? Yes, I have John, missed one. John Albee. Oh, John Albee, I skipped right over. How did I do that? Well, two, two mess ups uh, a day. So we're gonna <laughs> skip back up the agenda. To, uh, to Rachel, thank you so much for, uh, for pointing that out, Pauline. Uh, Rachel, would you introduce yeah, us? Yeah, it's, it's, it's my pleasure. So uh, for all of you that live in Newcastle, you may not have met John, uh, or you might not even know what John looks like, but you definitely know the good work John does. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, John is the owner of Rona. And uh, for years and years, John has done wonderful things in Newcastle, but um, when the suggestion was made to honor people that have gone above and beyond during the pandemic, uh, I knew immediately I had to put John's name forward. So uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, it just, it started out with these signs around town saying Newcastle proud. And, and I was amazed. I would drive by and I would take photos of them um, just to make a collage of how proud I was of my town. But, but that was really John and, uh, and some, some volunteers that John uh, must have got together. And, and these signs were thanking frontline workers. They were thanking grocery workers. They were thanking everybody that was staying open. And... Um, and then it was uh, Canada Day. This, this made a, a, a national coverage, I believe. He arranged a, a drive-by that went all through town just to uh, a parade, for lack of a better word, but it wasn't because it was just 
much smaller, it was a drive-by. And then he tried to do the same thing at Christmas time with Santa going through the community since we couldn't have our Santa Claus parade. And uh, unfortunately that didn't happen because uh, the numbers, we just couldn't do that or they couldn't do that. But he still created this beautiful display of lights on Toronto Road that many people in Newcastle and probably Bowenville enjoyed. But those are just a couple things. He had flowers, uh, mums in the fall delivered to the retirement home, poinsettias delivered to the retirement homes. It's, it really is with John never ending. And um, uh, like I said, the, John was the first person I thought of when I was thinking of everyday heroes during this pandemic. And it is such an honor to finally recognize John for everything he's done for years in Newcastle, but especially during the last year. So um, congratulations, John. Uh, we are very lucky to have you in our community. And I think uh, whether people have met you or not, I think we all love you and uh, thank you. <clears throat> that, thank you, Rachel. And thank you, John. John, you were uh, you were an often uh, nominated uh, person, so uh, clearly popular and deserving. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, and I hope everybody can help everyone else put a smile on their face. Excellent. Here, Excellent. Here. Okay. All right. And with that, clearly, we're, now we're down to our uh, our final recipient. Uh, Gord Wallace, uh, if you're there, uh, are you able to introduce our final? I am, but I, I'm a little taken aback that you pronounce the T in often. Is that a normal yeah. thing for you? Yeah, just like just like schedule is pronounced schedule, right? You're right. Like yeah. Schedule. But I didn't. I digress. I, <laughs> I, I I did not expect you to to pronounce it often. I, so anyway, I'll start off. Uh, I'll start off mine with uh, in, in a, with something that I've said uh, probably uh, at least a thousand times before. Is um, my God, Martha, you look just wonderful tonight. It's a... <laughs> oh, wait a sec. Sorry, I, mean... I was trying to click on. You, that's those are very kind words, Gord. Thank you. I, it's it's I, you know I've said it before. I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> I've just never seen you on a Zoom, uh, a Zoom little window before. This is uh, this is my first time, first time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a good leader usually starts with uh, a willing heart, a positive attitude, and a desire to make a difference. Not only a difference in the lives of our elderly population, but the lives of each of the employees who look up to her for guidance every day. There are certain characteristics, traits, and skills that ultimately go... Was that... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I, I thought somebody was calling me. Was, was that my mother? <laughs> sorry. Um, that ultimately build the uh, most effective leaders. Michelle Stroud, most definitely possesses all the necessary traits to get oh. people to follow her lead and make them feel acknowledged, valued, and most importantly, heard. She is an honest leader who sticks to her word. She lives by core values and leads by example every day. The true grit of a leader is not how they perform during good times, but how they roll up their sleeves and pitch in when times get difficult ultimately inspiring people to do things they never thought they could. COVID went to war with long-term care homes, affecting our elderly across the, our nation. The nightmare that we witnessed every night while watching the news was devastating to us as viewers. We could not fathom what our healthcare workers were going through, especially in our long-term care facilities as they were hit the hardest. Imagine the magnitude of weight on Michelle Stroud and her team having the responsibility of keeping 210 vulnerable people safe from the virus that ultimately claimed the lives of millions of across the globe. With diligence, heart, and perseverance, Michelle led her team uh, through this pandemic. She was present in the home seven days a week for sometimes 16 hours a day, 
to support her staff and residents at Glen Hill Strathaven, you know, in Bowmanville. Um, uh, however, a little bird told me that she's generally present seven days a week, regardless, uh, as opposed to irregardless, Steve. Um, her staff was scared, residents were nervous, and the families were petrified. Michelle took the time every day to speak up with staff, residents, speak with staff, residents, and emailed every family member daily to keep them up to date with the status of the home. Michelle and her team implemented infection control practices before they were mandated to do so by governing bodies. Keeping her residents and staff safe and healthy was and is her number one priority. Her hard work and diligence paid off as there were four COVID outbreaks at Glen Hill Strathaven in the last year, and there were no lives lost. Michelle's retiring in May of this year. She's gonna be sadly missed by her leadership team, the 258 frontline staff and 153 residents. Her shoes will be incredibly difficult to fill. Michelle has set the bar high by being a wealth of information and motivating others to be their best. Michelle believes that each of us has a personal calling and drive to succeed. Over the past 34 years, Michelle was able to harness what she loved and found a way to offer it to others in the form of hard work and leadership. Congratulations, Michelle. Thank you very much. Um, I do what I do because I love it and I love our seniors. Uh, Glen Hill Strathaven will always stay very close to my heart. Uh, you know, this award is not for me though. This award will be for all of my staff my families and my residents who support me every single day. Without my residents and my families, and especially my staff, I don't know if I could have got through this. Um, but, you know, being that, and I think that's the key when you're in long-term care, communication and holding each other up, having fun, being there to answer a text, from an employee, answer an email from a family member. That's why we do what we do. Um, yes, I am retiring in, uh, I was supposed to actually, this was supposed to be my last week. Um, but you know, you don't let go of a home until you find the right leader. So uh, thank you very much. And thank you to the Rotary Club because you've done nothing but support Strathaven. Uh, and it's been very, very member. While I still have the floor, Michelle, um, just to point everybody to the chat, uh, there's uh, some messages from Lindsay Park and, and Gail. Uh, everybody should read those. Um, they, Michelle, when you when you spoke to our club, especially at the time that you spoke to our club, it was it, like everybody said afterwards, it was absolutely phenomenal. We just had no idea uh, what you guys were doing over there. and. It wasn't just your presentation, but you like you really opened up our eyes during that uh, presentation. We uh, actually talked about it quite a few times, hence the uh, the Paula Harris fellow tonight. Well, thank you, and I think when I retire, I might just reach out and become one of your club members. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, on down. There we go. We got one. We got you one. Did. You got the tape there. <laughs> All right. Hey, um, the director of membership has been told and your name is added to the list. Okay. Thank you. Voilà. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Th thank you all. Steve. Uh, yep. Uh, Jim Boat, and maybe Jim would have an opportunity just to make a, a comment or two. I don't think he, he had anything. He didn't say anything and he might want to there. So if we could do that. Jim. Yes, I'm here, Wayne. Yeah. Just thought I'd give you an opportunity if there's any comments you wanted to make. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm very honored uh, to be part of this uh, group of, of recipients. And uh, it's nice that Rotary reaches out to their community and recognizes people. And I think that's a great thing that shows a lot for the what the club does for the community. And uh, really happy to be a part of this tonight. It was a wonderful uh ceremony and uh, just once again happy to be part of it thank you very much thanks jim thank you jim thank you very nice 
So normally, folks, we have uh, a segment called Happy Bucks, uh, which is kind of like grown up show and tell where we uh, talk about important uh, moments in our lives. But I'll tell you what, this has been an hour of Happy Bucks. Uh, uh, so I think we're going to, uh, given uh, the time, we're going to skip over that. But we have one important announcement. Uh, and Leanna, are you there? Or have, have we lost Leanna? No, oh, I'm here, sorry. Great. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. So um, my announcement is just about the, not just, but is about the Easter uh, Kids Respite Program Treasure Hunt that we're having. Uh, Rotary is put together for Sunday, March 28th from nine till 11. So hopefully we'll be seeing some kids out part of the respite program and their families. And they'll go from uh, a few different locations picking up some treats. And at the end of it, if they make it through and I hope they all do, they get to see the Easter Bunny. And to thank as well, um, Dave Sullivan and his wife, Tracy, because they've provided uh, big chocolate Easter eggs for the end of that event. And they had some friends donate some money towards the respite program in particular this Easter thing. And um, it's been wonderful to be a part of it. So that's it. Excellent. So Sunday the 28th from 9 till 11 a.m. Thank you, Leanna. For those of you that don't know, one of our uh, most favorite programs is our respite care program. Families with children of special needs. We hire uh, uh, several students uh, each summer uh, and they, they provide up to 30 families with just a few hours of respite each week to get some work done, have a rest, whatever it is, uh, get some errands done. Um, and we haven't been able to run it during uh, COVID. And those kids are normally invited to a Christmas party. Well, we couldn't have that this year, so it was a Zoom party. And we thought we need to spread some more smiles in keeping with, uh, with the theme of this event. Uh, our new members committee got together and organized this COVID-friendly Easter event for 27 uh, of, these, uh, of these families. Uh, and that's happening on Sunday morning. Um, so with that, um, uh, we'll go over to Gail Nyberg to deliver our quote of the week. Gail. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> At the end of the day, it's not about what you have or what you have accomplished. It's about who you have lifted up it's who it's about who you have made better and it's about what you've given back Denzel Washington thank you Gail thank you very much and now as we are accustomed to do at the end of a meeting if there's nothing else for the good of rotary remember in the things that you say and you do our four-way test is it the truth is it fair to all concerned will it build goodwill and better friendships and will it be beneficial to all concerned with that, have a fantastic evening and congratulations. And thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our recipients. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Stay well. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank, you. Night, thank you, Rotary Club. Congratulations, everyone. Good night. Good night. All the best. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Stay safe. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Let's meet in person one day. Yeah. What a great meeting. Good job. <laughs>